We are back with Susan Tribodeau, and she's going to share with us the basics of how to show a toy fox terrier. She is absolutely an amazing teacher, so be sure to watch all of her fabulous training tips. And of course, what's in her ringside bag. <laughs> I am adding episodes showcasing the basics of handling specific breeds as I expand our grooming library. And of course, we get to learn what's in their ringside bag. So be sure to comment below on what you've learned, like and share this video with your friends, and of course subscribe if you haven't already so that you can ring that little bell and get notifications so you don't miss a single episode. Two questions I always try to ask is, what kind of lead is recommended for this particular breed and how should it be placed onto the dog? Well, it depends on the dog. Okay. Um, some of them we use the, a simple choke collar. Mm -hmm. uh, Barnum, we use a little choke collar, but this is a puppy, he's just 10 months old, so we use a simple Resco. Now my, my really smaller ones, I'll use the thing that's got the kindness thing on the bottom, um, like Precious, because she's only five and a half pounds. We'll use the one that's wider on the bottom but he doesn't need it. So we'll put the Resco on him. And the Resco, you just wanna make sure that it's tight enough he can't slip out. So we make sure like there's a finger underneath there, but- If fingers need, okay. And then where so do you place the lead? You um, want it up behind the ears. Because if it's wide enough to go down his neck, then if he was to panic at something, he could slip out of it. Plus you wanna be able to control the head. Because on this breed, some breeds, they move with their head more out. This breed, you want them to be a little more animated with their head up. My dogs, I like to teach them to stack for the cookie because a lot of the toy breeds are not comfortable on the table. So I like to make my table a really great place to be. And yeah, the wiggle a little for the judge at first, but I, when I see people doing this, I, the dog never really relaxes in my mind. So from the time that they're puppies, I like to teach them to relax for that cookie. And yes, they're gonna wiggle a little bit, but it's all good because at the end, what we're gonna get is he's 10 months old and look how he's stacking on the table. Yep, yep. He's not afraid, he's happy, his ears are up, his head is up, he's looking around for the cookie. He's hoping somebody's gonna come feed him. He, yeah, very focused. So when we start this when, when they're just like six weeks, five weeks old, we'll start putting them on the table and we'll just give them pieces. This is string cheese. And we'll just start giving them pieces of string cheese because it's easy to take off tiny little pieces so you don't have to overfill them. And then eventually after they've learned to stand still for the cookie, cause I don't, they only get the cookie when they're still. Then eventually you get to the point where you can start setting up their feet. See, and I take the cookie away cause he's wiggling. So now he goes, oh, I was wiggling. I lost the cookie. Now I can come back and I can give him a piece of cookie again for a reward for being good. Now one of the things I like to tell judges cause I'm the judges education chairman for our breed club is if they would come up to the table and greet the exhibitor, because a lot of these dogs are not good on the table until they're older and more seasoned. And that gives the exhibitor a chance to kind of let out that breath and say good morning back and the dog goes, okay, mom sounds okay. Then I ask the judges when I teach the, don't go to the bite first. Okay. We've gone to all this trouble to get the dog set up. And if you go to the bite first, the dog's gonna go backwards and he's gonna get discombobulated. Now the judges go, we don't care, we're just examining the dog. But the exhibitor cares. And if the exhibitor gets tense, the dog gets tense. So just go and do the body first. Judge, go over the body, do your thing, and then come up and do the bite. So on this breed, are you showing all, are, are you showing just the front or are you showing the sides as well? So we've been having an argument about that because the AKC put on their chart that to look at the sides because we put that we wanted a complement of full teeth. However, in our standard, it says there's no fault for missing teeth. Oh. And so what we've been telling them is do we only want the front to be done. Okay. So we've come to a compromise. Uh, if the dog is scissors, they don't have to look any further unless they want to, it's still optional. They can always have the opportunity to check okay. all the teeth if they want. But if it's the, what we're gonna tell the judges um, and AKC sending this out to all the judges that are approved for the breed, if it's scissors, you don't have to go any further. If it is even, then you need to look at the sides because then it's not as good as, you know, we prefer the scissors. So now you go and see about the rest of it. Right. If okay, gotcha, scissors. right. So, and the other nice thing is if you do the bite last, mm -hmm. I put the dog on the floor. Remember, he doesn't really not like the table a lot of them when they're young. If I do the bite last and he held still, his reward is he got to get on the floor. So now he's looking forward to getting his teeth done once he starts to figure this out because it means I'm gonna get back on the floor. That's brilliant. So 
we always ask the judges, we've had a few judges go, well, I'm not changing how I do it. Okay, we get you, but still, if you really want the best experience for this breed in the ring, this is how you should do right, it. Right, right, I like it. So the other reason that we like to keep a look, it says that we should show them on a loose, loose lead, but the problem with toy foxes is they're the most food motivated breed I have ever met. And if you are following breeds where they threw a lot of bait on the ground, their nose is gonna be in the dirt. So you're gonna probably end up having a little bit of a snug lead on them just to keep their nose off the ground. I've had judges tell me before they could tell where all the food was in the ring by my dog going dip, 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 all the way around the ring. Yeah, 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 I can see that, yep. Yeah, these dogs are, they will eat anything and they're always looking for food. So on this breed, we don't want single tracking. Obviously, as the trots picks up, there will be some convergence due to physics to the center line, but we're not looking for single tracking. Okay. On the other hand, too, we don't want this. We want it to be nice under the body, parallel, and to okay. a little bit of convergence. Ready? Come on, let's go. Good puppy. Good puppy. You're a little overstretched. Okay. We're just 10 months. You're That's right. Let's go around. You ready? Let's go. Good puppy. It should be noted that when you're taking the dog around the ring, you want them to have a level top line, but you also want their head as well as their tail to be held up. And then this is a breed that we prefer them to be free free stack. You okay. will see owners occasionally going to the floor, usually with a younger dog or maybe there's a big class and they're losing their interest. So you want to keep them focused. Right. So you will occasionally see people go to the floor. We prefer to be standing, standing. but, but you know, we, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. do. Right. So. Okay. So what is in your ringside bag? Not much. Mostly I have cookies. Okay. I may have a small squeaky. Yeah. I may have a wet wipe because the boy dogs sometimes don't miss their front legs and you don't want to go in the ring with yellow dripping. So I may what, wipe down their front leg because we might have done a last minute go out and pee. Right. And pretty much that's it besides the bait, the all important treats. Right. And this breed wants their cookies. That's it. That, it's a low maintenance, easy breed as far as getting them ready to show. They're very opinionated, they're terriers. And I, as I used to say when I showed his mother, she, that every day is a new day. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you don't need much besides the cookies in your pocket. Just a sense of humor and some patience and know that you go in and you may have a perfect show experience or the dog might decide to go in and be a clown and it's all good. <laughs> be ready to have fun, basically. Yep. You good boy. Amazing stuff, right? Susan really truly is an awesome teacher and as I promised you there is more Toy Fox Terrier content coming your way that could definitely be applied to just about any toy breed actually just about any breed period so hang tight and keep an eye out for future episodes.